the last session of today. Um, so we can take our time a bit. We're already a bit late, but there's no problem. Um, session speaker will be Nisera. Um, you'll be talking about, um, if I understand correctly, the situation with wastes management in Kenya. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nisera Wanjiru from Asram Dueras International. And uh, it's good that uh, I'm the last person because uh, we'll be having a lot of talking. And uh, in this session, we'll be speaking about how it's done, the data processing. Where do we start? And uh, for you, the tech, the tech guys, so where do we, where, where is the gap between us, the people who do the mapping, the actual mapping, and uh, you, the tech guys? And uh, what type of uh, technology or uh, application now should we come up with so as you can help the us people that do the real job in the community? We are talking about mapping for better and clean environment. And why? Mm, in Kenya, anytime there's rain, there are reports of that. And uh, in Kibera, where I live, uh, this year we lost two people uh, because of the drain blockages. And uh, that's, uh, that's why we saw the need to do this survey. And uh, we didn't do it in uh, Kibera, we did it in Mokuru, another informal settlement in Kenya. And uh, having said that, please don't sleep because uh, I know you are tired. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. How did we do all this? We had the background information, data correction, all these things. We go through all these things when we are correcting data in SDI. But again, I should remind you that this is just one of the, pro of the many projects in SRAM Dwellers International. Because uh, we are in 39 countries, Kenya being one of them, and uh, we are doing several projects around Africa and uh, the other parts of continents. So, we have the information relating to weekly waste produced per person. Today's not about maps. I'm not going to give you any map because uh, I know you've been having a lot of maps, a lot of technology, a lot of thinking, a lot of analyzing. It's just data. The type of waste that uh, we are dealing with eh, in our household, we have the toxic waste, we have the recyclable, we have the organic waste. But uh, again, Per week, I don't know how much waste you produce per week in your house. We found that in our informal settlement, the toxic waste that is produced per week, it's 1.089 kgs. We have the, recycl the recyclable waste, which is 3.5 kg. The organic, which is 11.05. 11.065 kgs, and the total average waste for one family per week, it's 15 kg. But the question was, where does this waste go? How is it disposed? How did we come up with uh, the results, these results? So we did uh, a random sampling where we were supposed to take our survey. And uh, there was the qualitative, whereby we used the community mapping and focus group discussions. We, have, we, could, uh, we could take a group of people, uh, not, less than, uh, not more than 15, and uh, discuss with them about the waste management in their areas. And then we had the quantitative interviews, whereby we had the statistical analysis of data. How was this process? In SDI, before we collect any data, we must develop a toolkit. 
depending on the type of data that we are collecting. We have the resource mobilization. And in the resource mobilization, the community rise there also. We have the money, we have the community, we have all those type of things. We have the data collector training. We have to train the community because we don't want a scenario whereby we'll hire some students from university, they'll come to Kibera or Mokuru, collect data, and then off they go. We want the community themselves to collect their own data and understand why they are collecting this data. Is it of use to them? Then we have the actual data correction. Then we have the data analysis and reporting that is done now by the experts in SDI. Then data validation and recommendations. Those are used training how to collect data. They have been trained eh, on the toolkit because they must understand what questions they are going to ask the community. But they are from the same community. So for instance, we cannot take a youth from uh, Madare. Madare is an informal settlement in, uh, in Nairobi to go and collect data in Kibera and vice versa. So you have to train the same, the same community. Then uh, what, were what were the results after all this? So we found out that 18.9% uh, buried their wastes. So the 15 kg of the waste that is being collected, someone will go somewhere and bury that waste. And uh, that's why we are talking about uh, the environmental pollution, our seas. I think it's good there. Yeah? Um, uh, yeah. yeah. I think it's good for this session, eh? We're all awake now. Because uh, we've been listening and listening and listening, so it's good to be joined by another person who was supposed to be here, but he didn't make it. So as you can hear from him too. But let me finish. I'm having the shortest presentation. So don't worry. The shortest. 18.9% 18 so after you bury the waste, we are talking about the environmental pollution. Our seas are very much polluted. So when it rains, this, all this waste is taken to the seas. So you can imagine the dangers of that. 50% stated that no effort is being made to deal with the waste. It is a disaster. You will agree with me. Communities are used, and uh, again we found out that uh, the community, some of the community members are using this garbage to cook food. And uh, how they do it, they will dry this waste, they sort it out and they cook with it as it is. And then the last one, eh? some will burn their waste, and of course the effects of the climate change. The community efforts, eh? this is, if I go back to the other slide there, eh? the communities are using garbage to cook in a community kitchen. So you can see this woman here. Is a, this is a community kitchen, eh? a big community kitchen eh? that has uh, like six banners. <laughs> but now they are using the waste that is being collected to cook food and uh, yeah, it's food that is being consumed, consumed by people. The data correction, the household data correction. Then what are the next steps? After collecting all this data, what next? This data will be shared by the... We did the survey this year, actually. And uh, this data will be shared with the county government. And uh, after sharing the data with the county government, we'll have a stakeholders meeting whereby the community, the county government, and now the NGOs that are involved in data management, 
will come together and uh, see the way forward about this. And then develop a policy to regulate garbage, garbage disposal and then help the government to come up with a uh, with dumping site. Because uh, if you come to Kenya, I don't know how many people have been to Kenya or in Africa. Oh, 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 that's good. The gov... The garbage disposal in these countries, and don't know about Europe, because I'm not studied about that, it's, uh, it's wanting, because you'll find that this is my house, and uh, I'm dumping my garbage just right at the door, or behind my door. And there's no one who is asking about it. So if government can up, come up with policies that we regulate the dumping, the garbage disposal, that will be helpful. So where was this data collected? And where can you get it? You might be asking those questions. And other data, of course, not just these. Eh? We have a lot of data. This data was collected in Mokuru Kwaruben. And uh, we have our website, Mungana Wanavijuju, and the SRAM Dwellers International. And so who is this now talking all these things? Eh? Hey, it's me. <laughs> Hello. So yeah, it's me. Eh? It's Nisera Wanjiro, Nisera Kimani. You can get me on niserawanjiro at gmail.com. And uh, yes, that's my number. So I'm done with my presentation. But I'll be joined by by my colleague, Kirion Nyambuga, who will now talk about the technicalities of the, all this. And uh, he will answer some of your questions and uh, help, me, help him answer some questions also. But the challenge I'm giving to you people, the people that are in the technology world, OK, we, you are doing a lot of work. You are producing apps, the software that we are using. We are the consumers of your apps. But again, I ask myself, after all this is done, we still have a gap. There's the tech world and there's the community. How are we going to bridge this gap? Because we need softwares that uh, we can help the community uh, that can fit our, our phones. Eh? So as if I'm going to Kibera or if I'm going to Madare, I can be able to train uh, Mamamboga or this youth who has, no, who has no smartphone and be able to correct the data and help him in the near future. Mm -hmm. So I, c can I bring in my colleague? Yeah, please. OK. But I'm the last speaker, so. Can I it's try good. and yes. Like yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Let's try it. Video call is disabled, no camera found. Okay, mm. okay. video call. Oops, something went wrong.
So, um, I just finished my presentation. Kirion, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. So, uh, Use you can hear me. So, you can hear me. So, I've just finished my presentation, which was very short. And uh, you just introduced yourself and uh, listen to some of the questions that these people have. And tell them who you are in SDI. Yes, yes. Yeah. So should I tell them who yes, I am? Yes, 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 yes. It's important. We're all seeing you. Okay, okay. I'm uh, Kilian Yambuga. I am. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so I can't, I can't see anyone as well, but I'll just, I'll just go on. Is it okay? Yes, yes. Just go on. Okay. I'm Kilian Yambuga. I am... Uh, a bank planner working with uh, Mungano and Abijiji. Uh, so I support Mungano and Abijiji, which is a federation of uh, slum dwellers uh, on issues of uh, research and uh, community planning. So, so, trust that's for, yeah. so do you have any question that you can post? And me here, because we are supposed to be here together. Do you have any type of question? Any kind of question, even if it's embarrassing question, you can just ask. Yeah. I have one question. Can you tell something about the um, software you have been using for getting these figures? Because we've just been seeing numbers about um, waste treatment, um, and they have been collected in a way. Um, and we are curious about what software has been used. The software. Uh, can I answer for that? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, we've, been, we've been using uh, ODK to collect uh, information in the settlement where we are able to design questionnaire that's being used to collect information either at the household level or maybe in institutions within the informal assessment. Then after that, then uh, that information is synchronized into our online platform, which is later made uh, public through a platform known as uh, Noyo City Platform. Any other question? What? I think you have to stand here and talk into the computer as well. Yeah. Uh, what challenges do you have in communicating with your community? Uh, and how do you make them understand what it's needed to collect, to collect for your project? <coughs> Kiran, have you heard that question? Yes, yes, very well. So and, uh, and, uh, I can get the question. Yeah. Do you want me to respond to that as well? Yeah, you can respond and I'll also respond to it. Yes, so, so uh, processes uh, include community members uh, right from the beginning to the end of it. That means we, in, uh, we involve the community members uh, through the formula formulation of the, document, the tools that you're using to collect data. We train the community on the tools and the ones who are able to actually do the actual exercise of collecting that data. So in terms of challenges, we have we usually face very little challenges, if any, because community members are able to interact with uh, other uh, the people who are collecting data are community members, so they are able to interact, uh, to interact with uh, other uh, members within their communities very well. And uh, for that reason, we are even able to collect and to bring out uh, vital information that other someone from outside the assessment cannot be able to uh, obtain. Yeah, as I said, maybe to add on that, um, we are the people, eh? I being one of them, that collect this data. And uh, because we come from the same communities, the challenges are very, very fewer. 
if I go to collect data in Kibera, where I live, I will not get that much challenge compared to the person who is coming from outside to collect the data, to ask me questions. I'm going to a person that I know to ask these questions. So it is easier for me to do that. Yes, one more question. Yeah, you have to talk into the laptop, I think. I'll come here and I do that. Uh, one question is you mentioned that the data is uploaded or shared with the county government. So I'm wondering how much is government supporting this at the county level or higher up? Do you get any support from government in, in doing this work? And then you spared us the maps. You said you are yes. showing us numbers only, but sometimes it's nice to put these things on maps. So I'm, I'm assuming you do some of that too. Maybe you can tell us a bit about the mapping part too. Thank you. Okay. Kirian, do you want to go first or I go first? You go first. Okay. <laughs> So you asked one nice questions eh, about the government support. S um, I'll talk of uh, two achievements that we've had in SDI. Mm, in our informal settlement, uh, they're not that developed. And uh, there's a data we collected about Mokuru. And uh, we shared, Mokuru is, if you go to Mokuru, it's another part of uh, let me say of a country, because uh, we don't have toilets, the drainage is poor, or that kind of stuff. But uh, through the Mungano Navijiji in Kenya, we, correct that, we collected that data and we shared with the county government, that is Nairobi, and uh, we were able to negotiate with them and tell them, hey, this area needs some development, and uh, they declared that a special planning area. And uh, at the moment, that process is ongoing. We've had consort consortiums, like uh, 25 consortiums, uh, that are helping Mokuru to, de to come up with the uh, development. And uh, another thing that we did in, uh, through SDI, the railway allocation plan. In, uh, in 2005, uh, there were some evictions that were to take place along the railway along the railway line. And uh, Mungano came on board and uh, they had a negotiated deal with uh, the railway, the Kenya Railways, and uh, they were able, and uh, they were able to negotiate with the, with the World Bank, and uh, they gave them some fund. And uh, today, if you come to Kenya, we have a beautiful project, the railway allocation plan, and that was made possible through the Slam Dollars International, the data that we collect. So, Kirion? Kirion? It is not just to add uh, the culture. Just to add on what you said, I think uh, in terms of maybe sharing this information with the government, uh, the main purpose as to why maybe Mungano uh, exists is to uh, help maybe develop an advocate for other informal settlement in terms of development. So the information that's obtained from the settlements usually is shared with the government so that the government can fulfill the responsibilities of this settlement. So in settlements that lack, uh, let's say, water, that have maybe poor roads, lack sanitation facilities, we know those are the responsibility of the government. So the data that we collect usually presents the challenges faced by these settlements and uh, we usually request the uh, government, either the national government or the county government, to respond and fulfill the duties of the informal settlement. So thank you, Kirian. You asked about, about the maps. Eh? We have a lot of maps, and uh, that's why I said today there's no, there's no maps in this presentation. But if you go to know your city, you can find all the work that you've been able to do in uh, the 39 countries. And uh, you just need to click if it is uh, South Africa, Cape Town, just log in the name and uh, you'll be able to see the work that SDI has done. If you go to Kenya, you go to Nairobi, we have like a 50, 57 informal settlement in Nairobi and a 167 informal settlement in the whole of Kenya. So if you click just uh, Mokuru, you'll be able to see the kind of data that we have 
and the maps as well. So do you have any other question? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, I think uh, we've been able to do a lot of maps. I know, uh, I'm sorry if you didn't present any, but then we've been able to map around 329 informal settlements in Kenya, and we have uh, maps that shows the boundary of all those informal settlements and the services that are contained in each of the settlements. And uh, lately, I think through the mapping process, uh, it has revealed several things in our second form of settlements here in Kenya. I don't know. Most of the people, uh, there has been a narrative that Kibera maybe is uh, one of the biggest informal settlement in Kenya or uh, in East Africa. And then through the mapping processes, uh, it has revealed that Mukuru is the biggest informal settlement. In terms of the growth, the land area coverage, and even the population that's contained in the informal settlement. So, so all this information uh, is contained, uh, can be accessed uh, through the Website, the New York City platform. And with this, I think we reached our time for today because it's almost six o'clock. Nisera, thank you so much for presenting. I think next time we'll see you with maps. Yeah, you seeing me with a lot of maps, eh? but today, you know, I was the last presenter, so I decided, okay, let me spare you these maps because uh, they were very, if I'm to present maps here, oh my god, you're. You can always give Seven. us maps, no yes. worries. <laughs> I want a big round of applause for our speakers. So I also want to say thank you to, uh, as I said, I'm Nisera, I'm from Kibera, and uh, I am not a tech guy. Uh, I do the job now that uh, you sit down and uh, prepare those softwares. We are the consumers. I, Nisera, am the consumer of this software, the ODK correct. This is what we use to correct data. But I want to tell you, eh, when you go back to your countries and uh, to, your, to your companies, make sure that uh, you produce other softwares that uh, can be able to suit as the people that are consuming this software that are easier. I know ODK is easier, but uh, I, I want to train that Mamamboga to be able to correct his data uh, quickly and I can upload it and uh, he can, uh, she can be helped with that data. That is my humble request as the main data corrector in this post4G. I know all the others are people in technology. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, both of you.